Hello and welcome to Force.comcast episode 11, an overview of the Force.com REST API. This week's Force.comcast is the first in a multi-part series on RESTful APIs within Salesforce. Over the next few weeks we'll cover a series of topics, starting with an overview of what REST is, the RESTful verbs and calling the uh, Force.com REST API today. And then in future episodes we'll cover creating RESTful web services with Apex, resource mapping, nesting resources, creating public Apex REST services and also testing RESTful services properly. So we'll start off with an overview of what REST actually is and what RESTful means. So REST stands for Representational State Transfer and can be loosely described as providing a well-structured simple method of accessing resources, which are often represented by noun keywords, through a URI, where we act with some method or verb upon that resource. So there are a series of standard verbs which I've listed here, so that's get, post, put, patch and delete all of which are supported by Salesforce in the, the Apex REST web services, although the standard force.com API doesn't actually have any interpretation of the put method. So I mentioned those uh, five verbs, so let's have an overview of what they mean. So uh, get is one of the two most common methods that you'll have probably seen and is really used for retrieving records or uh, some data from um, a website or from a resource. So it's similar to a SOC or SELECT statement, so you can think of it as you're getting some data from the server and retrieving data uh, using that method. POST is the other common one that people are likely to have seen, um, and that's really used for creating resources, so it's similar to a DML insert. So whenever you're posting uh, data to that URI, you're asking it to create something at that resource or create something in the background using some server-side logic using that resource. Put is often used, or put is used, when you want to update a full resource. So that's a full DML update. So if you have the entirety of a contact record that you want to update, you would use um, put. Um, but this then brings us on to patch, which is where you only want to do a partial resource update. So whereas put, you might want to push the entire contact record to be updated. With patch, you would only provide the first name for you to uh, for changing and you'd send it to the uh, resource representing that contact which we'll see in a minute. Uh, the last one we've got is delete which is pretty self-explanatory. It deletes resource and is similar to a DML delete. Um, and I just want to spend a moment going through the difference between put and patch because a lot of people struggle with when to use each of them. So the main difference um, between them is around it and potency. So what that means is that when you call a method um, a repeated number of times with the same parameters, the same action occurs. So of the five verbs we've got there, the five different methods, all of them except post and patch are idempotent. So what that means is if you're doing an update of a record where you're using put, so you're replacing the entire record, no matter how many times you do that update and you do that method, the same action will occur every time. Similarly, if you get the same resource every time, you'll retrieve the same resource. Um, and if you go to delete the same resource every time, obviously, you can only do that once, but the action will occur repeatedly. And this is important for web services because obviously web services can time out, connections can be um, less than fully available all the time. And if you're on something like a 3G connection, you may have an interrupted connection to worry about. So you can uh, run the uh, same method multiple times and all uh, perform the same action. Now, uh, Post and patch are not idempotent because you're updating either in the case of patch, you're updating a partial resource, so it might perform a different action every time, and um, depending upon the value. And in the case of post, if you're creating a resource, it might have a different ID every time, for example, um, like a DML insert. So that gives us a, a pretty broad overview of what REST is and uh, hopefully explains what the different keywords are and that's going to be really important later on when we're building our own uh, custom web services in future videos. But it's good to know now so that when we have a look at the force.com REST API in a second, we can see how we're going to use it. So what I'm going to do now is navigate to uh, the workbench. So many people don't realize there's this fantastic uh, open source tool called the workbench, and you can access it by going to workbench.developerforce.com and you uh, log in using single sign-on, so you authenticate with your org credentials, and you can use the REST Explorer, which is here under the Utilities. You click for the REST Explorer. 
And what this does is this allows you uh, to explore and mess around with the force.com API without having to uh, do the OAuth dance yourself and uh, find a way of authenticating. So this is the base URL for all of the force.com REST API. So it's actually calling to your uh, base Salesforce URL. So for example, HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash na1.salesforce.com slash services slash data. And this is the API version you want to work with. So you can work with different versions of the Salesforce uh, or the force.com REST API. Similar to how you can have different versions of your Apex classes. You'll remember from one of our earlier videos that we mentioned how this is um, a possible problem if you're working with multiple different versions in between because you can have extra fields added or not added, different functionality enabled. So just make sure you're using um, either the latest, which is always kind of the safest way to go, or using uh, a single version. So what you can do is you can select any of the verbs you want up there, but we're just going to leave it on get at this base URL. And if we hit execute, this goes away in the background and it will call the REST API for us. And it will tell us all of the different possibilities, all the different methods we can do. So there's queries, you can get the limits. Um, we're going to have a look at S objects in a second. You can do the tooling API, chatter, analytics, all of the different APIs that are available to you, flexi pages, app menus, everything that you could use within the Salesforce API system. So we're going to click on S objects, and what this will do for us is this will retrieve a full list of all of the S objects. So you can see we've got lots of them here, some of which you'll recognize, some of which you might not do. So uh, ideas people will be aware of, uh, leads, obviously, and we're going to work with con uh, accounts. So if we click on the account record now, uh, on the account uh, item, it tells us uh, different customization settings, so if it's a custom record, if it's a custom, set, uh, custom object, whether it's custom setting, um, if it's creatable, it's key prefix, which is always useful to know. Um, and we can see here some of the URLs. So we've got the different URLs, the different resources that we can call for the account. So here we've got the one to get um, some information about the account. We'll use that in a minute. One to get the approval layouts, uh, one to get the quick actions for the account, one to describe the account to get its row template for a particular ID, so we'll use that as well in a minute. One for the layouts and one for compact layouts. So it's really nice and easy. We can just click on the account one here. <coughs> and what this will do for us is it will bring back um, a describe for the object, which is the same as before with the same items here and it'll also bring up the recent items. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get Burlington Textiles, and we can see its ID here, so we're gonna copy that ID, and we're gonna have a look at the template for it. So when we click that, we can see now it's telling us that the URI needs to be completed, so we need to actually have an ID in there. So we'll replace this with the ID, and we're gonna execute, and it now brings back the information for Burlington Textiles Corporation of America. And this is all of the different fields on there, lots of nice information for us, all the way down to you know, opportunity status report, which is a link through for us. Um, you remember, in fact, that this is the URL we created previously in one of the earlier videos. And what we're going to do is just go back up here, and we can see all the different fields we want to work with. So what we're now going to do is we're going to do an update. So this is an update where we're going to just update a single field. We're in fact going to update the account number field because we've just realized that this is the wrong account number. So I'm going to choose patch. And you can see here I've pre-prepared uh, an input. So this is just a simple JSON structure here. Um, and what we're doing is we're saying that the account number field should have the value 123456. So if we execute that now, go away and operate in the background and it just returns a response that says to us it occurred. And if we go and choose the get method now on the same resource, we can see that it's updated the account number to be 123456. So as you can see, the REST Explorer is a really good tool to show you how you can use the REST API within Salesforce. And it provides you an easy way to get into all of the different APIs you could use. It returns responses nicely. And you can also see the raw response if you want to, which is in uh, JSON. So it gives you a way of seeing how the data should be formatted if you want to pass values back in. And this is a really useful tool, so I recommend you go away and have a play with it. Um, all of the resource uh, resources around the REST API can be found here. 
at uh, salesforce.com slash us slash developer docs and then API underscore rest. This is the latest and greatest version for API 31. Um, and have a play with it because in the next video we're going to go away and we're going to start writing our own uh, REST API. So it would be good for you to have had a play with it.